Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the financial industry and what is going to be the next domino to fall, guys. Now, over the last few days, you've seen that First Republic um, is gone as of now. So it was finally determined that um, First Republic would be taken over by JP Morgan Chase. That is right, guys. JP Morgan Chase is the largest financial institution in the nation. They are taking over the assets um, and seeing how that is going to be impacted. But with that being said, there are a couple other places or a couple other financial institutions including PacWest and Western Alliance shares, as well as Comerica, um, that they've really talked about seeing a massive, massive decline in the stock values. Now, uh, PacWest has seen, I believe they said a 70% decline in the stocks over the past 12 months, which is kind of crazy because it seems like it could be the next sell-off. Now, we do know that the Federal Reserve increased um, interest rates 0.25 again today, which means that now the Fed's fund rate is as a, it, it is at a 5.25, which is incredible, incredible. Um, not only just the rate, so this is the highest that we have seen the rate in 17 years. That is right, guys. For the last 17 years, interest rates have been... Um, lower than lower than where they are at five and a quarter but the big thing is the federal reserve has raised interest rates a total of now 10 times since uh, march of 2022 singling or, or signaling the highest and the steepest climb that we have ever seen in interest rates that is right guys when you look at the graphs when you look at the charts it literally just almost shoots straight up when it comes to um the amount of interest rates that we have seen now with that, it roughly takes, they say, four to six months, possibly a little bit longer, to see the effects of the raising of interest rates. Now, if you do this month after month after month after month, I mean, 10 rate increases in what? Are we at 14, maybe 15 months? Um, 10 rate increases, we're not seeing the impact of what it's going to do, and they don't know what it's going to do, and that is kind of the caveat or where we're kind of stuck right now with the banking industry is the banking industry overall is holding an incredible amount of bonds, government bonds, um, which are paying a very low yield. As the Federal Reserve continues to drive up interest rates, those bonds lose value, which again, makes a very tough situation with the banking industry. Um, so looking at a couple like PacWest. So on Tuesday, uh, PacWest shares tumbled 28% to a record low, while Western Alliance, another larger financial institution, lost another 15% amid a lack of new news had banking experts caring about what was happening. So they're saying, and a lot of people are really on board with this, is it seems like that a lot of short sellers are short selling the banking institution or the banking stocks in general, um, driving the prices lower than they should, putting banks into a very bad situation, which could be some of the um, possible triggers that we're seeing as some of these financial institutions are having issues are having troubles. Now, PacWest and Western Alliance had recently disclosed first quarter results and updated figures through mid-April um, to calm investors down. But again, the stock price is really not seeing that. The market is looking for the next potential domino or the next one to see. After SV SVB, Signature, First Republic, we've seen Credit Suisse. It seems like there are going to be other ones that are going to kind of follow suit which is kind of interesting because we know going into next year, there is going to be a Federal Reserve digital currency. It is going to be an election year, guys. The U.S. is going to be on fire with news, with things going on. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens. So what we've kind of seen at this point is you have these larger financial institutions, the Wells Fargo's, you have the Chase, you have the Bank of America that really control a majority of the market. And then you have the smaller institutions, credit unions that are very individualized, um, personalized, personal loans, things of that nature that the larger organizations do not really focus on. So what does that mean? It is the mid-sized banks are the one that are really feeling the biggest pressure because the larger institutions are too big to fail. The smaller institutions don't have the overhead um, and they have the ability to really be a little bit more nimble because they're not a larger organization. It's going to be interesting to see what comes of this and exactly how it looks. So it was a pretty rough March overall. Um, digital banking tools and fields, field um, going through social media. Social media was the reason and they've kind of pegged it down um, why SVB bailed or, or failed as a financial institution. Customers attempted to withdraw more than $150 billion 
over a two day period, which of course left that institution short of funds with the liquidity, which ultimately led to the seizure and the takeover, um, which is interesting. Now, thinking back to 2008, 2009, when we seen the banking crisis, it's a little bit different than that. And that is one thing, guys, that I really wanted to share is when you look at 2008 with the financial crisis or the housing market, it was really something fundamentally we were doing wrong, which is not really the case that I see now. So bad loans, bad mortgages, bad underwriting policies in 2008 really led to what we've seen, but it has created turmoil, frightening people for about the last 15 years, because if you were around during that time, guys, there was a lot going on with the financial institutions and a lot that, you know, it came up with the too big to fail when it came to Bank of America and things of that nature. Now, focusing on PacWest Bancor, um, shares again going into Wednesday, which was today, fell 56% in the extended trading. So after the market closed, it seems like the stock is continuing to go down. Regional Bank is assessing options, including a possible sale, bringing um, advisors in to evaluate the long-term plan for the business. So it's either gonna be they come up with a long-term plan to really survive, or it's going to be a sale similar to what we just seen with Signature Bank and JP Morgan Chase taking them over. Now, one of the issues, of course, with JP Morgan is how big can they get in legally, government-wise, um, how re really how far can you take it and how big can they get? I believe they're already almost three, almost like 3.1, I wanna say $3.1 trillion um, that, that we've seen, which is kind of crazy. Now, JP Morgan Chase did buy First Republic. I believe it was like 10 cents on the dollar. It, it was literally dirt cheap. There, there was absolutely no reason um, why they would not um, why they would not buy it. And again, looking at PacWest though, the shares were trading at about $7, $6.50. Now they're trading at about $2.50 in the course of one day, guys. That is a massive, massive change when it goes into um when you look at the trading so other regional banks have been doing the exact same if you look at a lot of regional banks including again comerica when you look at huntington when you look at fifth third um when you look at um keycore when you look at west alliance they have again seen a very very steep decline when it comes to the share prices which we're going to have to see exactly what um what comes of that so PacWest reported that deposits declined more than five billion dollars in the first quarter, that is right, $5 billion. Nothing in comparison to an SVB that lost $140 billion in two days. They're looking at the entire quarter. Now, deposits have to be going somewhere. So what we're actually seeing is a lot of deposits from these mid-level banks, the smaller institutions are moving into the larger institutions. Again, your JP Morgans, your Wells Fargo, and your Bank of America, just to name a few, are getting a lot of the deposits that are kind of moving over. Even though they are not paying the rates that a lot of other places going, and you can really see that when you look at CD rates, when you look at savings rates, even right now, locally, Huntington Bank is offering a 14 month CD at 5.15%. That is right, guys, they increased the short term money because they are in need of capital, they are in need of cash. And be careful, guys, just really be cautious, do your research when it comes to these institutions because a lot of places will put out strong promotional CDs um, or strong savings accounts to attract not only new customers, but bringing in those deposits to those institutions, um, really trying to shore up some of the liquidity issues that they could be having on the backside. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you what you guys think. We're gonna have to see if Pac Western Bank or um, Pac West is going to be around what they decide to really do. I believe they're meeting um, today probably right now, guys, going into tomorrow, possibly going into Friday, to decide if they're gonna be in a financial institution that is going to stay around or if they're gonna be one that is just going to be sold or absorbed by a larger institution at this point. All right, guys, again, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.